The Dominican Republic attracts expats from all over the world. The expat community makes up around half a million people living in the country. And in this video, we'll focus on a few large expat communities actually living here. It's a common fact that expats tend to live where other expats they live, which is primarily on the north coast, Porta Plata, Sassua and Cabaretta. These towns offer international supermarkets, gated communities, schools and several international restaurants, along with good health care. However, in the last 10 to 15 years, the east coast, Punta Cana Bávaro, has become the new government favoured area of the country, which due to its various political decisions and financial interest, has also overtaken the north coast as the main tourist destination. It has a major international airport with more flights than the north and a growing infrastructure. There are also expats found in the capital, Santo Domingo, as well as in the second largest city, Santiago. However, these folks are more likely to be there for work reasons rather than retirement. Las Terrenas and Samaná in the Northeast Peninsula are also home to several expats, especially the French and Italians. Additionally, there is a growing number of expats who prefer the mountains to the beaches and they can be found up in the town of Jarabacoa in the center of the country. Now let's talk to some expats from various nationalities found living here on the north coast. The first German Jews came to the country in the early 40s and founded the town of Sassua, and their success attracted even more Germans later on. Economic relations between the two countries strengthened in the late 90s. So since the 90s, there's been a new wave of expats from Germany. Today, there's approximately 7,000 Germans living in the country, most of whom have settled either on the north coast in Porta Plata, Cabaretta Sassua, or down in the capital, Santo Domingo. Yeah, folks, I'm here with Uwe Knödelsleder. Uwe Hubertus Knödelseder. Knödelseder. Okay, got to say it correctly, yeah. Thanks for being on video, Uwe. Welcome. So you represent Germany. Yes. Over not, here. Not only Germany, Bavaria. Bavaria, more exactly. I am Niederbayer. Okay. But you are German? Pure. <laughs> okay. Now, does your nationality down here represent a big expat community, would you say? Yes, I would say. A lot of Germans here doing business, but private also a lot. Yep. Sure. And um, from your observation, do the Germans here act and behave the same or differently than they would be back in Germany? I would say my impression is that they are almost more free, more relaxed here in this country because it's another mood, like in their own country. In our country, the, the mood is very bad because of governments and they feel free here, they feel relaxed and yeah. And would you say you trust the German uh, expats more than say the other nationalities here? No, no, I make no difference. Normally you should think that you trust your own citizens more than others, but I had a lot of contacts with Canadians, Americans, Dominicans. Depends on what is your impression of the person. Now, where would you say the Germans primarily uh, hang out? Yeah, of course they search the places where Germans meet each other, like German restaurants, like Schlemmerstube, or what sounds German, Schnitzel Paradise, Paradies. But uh, we meet in, 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 I met some Germans here, three, four guys. We meet on different places, Italian restaurants. And but do you think because people enjoy still, even though they've left their country, speaking their own language, that more Germans kind of huggle up and, and hang out with each other and speak German to each other? Most of the Germans I met here, they speak pretty well English. Mm -hmm. And so they have no problems to go to other places where they also speak English or Spanish. Yet do they find it more attractive to kind of hang out with other Germans, you think? Do you find no. quite a few groups no. of Germans? They make no difference. Oh. Yeah. They go there where they feel well. Mm -hmm. Well, surroundings, well, a good atmosphere, good mood. 
Yeah. Would you say the Germans down here, they stick together if there's an issue or problem? Yeah, probably, yeah. The Germans like to stick together to other Germans, yes. So, like, we meet today in an Italian restaurant and uh, mostly we are three, four people, all Germans. For how long you've been here? I, I was living four years in Santo Domingo, 2022. I went back to Germany for a few months and since February the 6th, I move to the north. Would you say when you compare the the Germans you've met down here, are they different than the typical Germans who never travel out of the country? Is it a certain type of mentality of person that ends up being here in uh, paradise and said goodbye to all friends, family, to, to have a, a new and different life down here? Yes. Are they different in mentality? They, they are different. Yeah. They are, they are open-minded. And uh, the Caribbean feeling is, I guess that's the, the main point, why they are lo like to stay here, feeling mm -hmm. relaxed. You have everything here. You have the beach, you have uh, Monito Playas, and uh, yeah. I, I hear a lot of Germans come out with some pretty harsh comments about Germany now. Yes. So as a final question, uh, what are the differences they find between Germany today and living in Dominican Republic that would attract them to actually come and live here? Actually, it started, all that bad stuff started with the COVID restrictions, which are mostly planned, as many people know. And the government changed with a, what we call eco-fascists with the Green Party, what makes the living in Germany very, very difficult. They cannot pay, many people cannot pay the heating, cannot pay the electricity, still to work there, feed their family, cannot leave. That's uh, the reason, I guess, there are a lot of pensioners here. Yeah. So a lot they of people just say enough of this and then exactly. sell up and yeah. get out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, super duper. Thank you so much for your great input and uh, I do wish you all the very best of your life down here. Thank you. Well, okay. have fun. Great to have you here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. The Dominican Republic opened its embassy in Moscow in 2006 as part of a plan to promote DR as a brand. Since then, expats from Russia started coming into this country and they've primarily been spreading all over the north coast as well as in Punta Cana, Barbaro areas. Russians have also invested multi-millions of dollars here and one example of this is found in Susua where they built the large residential community called Susua Ocean Village which many have benefited from. In total there's about 4,000 expats from Russia living in Dominican Republic. Everyone, I'm here with Ilya from the International Tennis Center in Susua in the entrance of Susua Ocean Village. Thanks for jumping on camera again. Hi Mr. T, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Now, I was very uh, keen to have a, a Russian on here. When you first came here, did you meet a lot of Russians straight away? Actually, of course, yes. Just because when I got here, I had no Spanish at all. So I had to, yeah, make friends just with Russians, actually, at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and how did that work out? Uh, actually, that worked out very well, and they helped me a lot. And just because of them, I got my business settled and since the first week when I met my first friends and they helped me out my life started and since then it just goes on I mean yes I really appreciate that help and that Fantastic. was a huge help I would say but amongst other nationalities I've heard some horror stories as well so Russians are kind to each other in general um, not always of course but uh, in our country it's kind of the same I mean, it just depends on personality. I don't think it depends on specific people in this country, on that country, mm -hmm. or that country. It's, it's just personality. Yeah. Some of them are bad in Russia and good in Russia, and here the same. Some of them are good, some of them are So you struck good. some good ones? I think I got lucky and I met some good guys. Some good guys. And still today, would you say you hang out with Russians more than other nationalities down here? Yes, I think maybe more with the Russian. Our kids still have some Russian friends. Our like the whole families mm -hmm. who we hang out. Yes, mostly Russian. So would you say that's because it's more convenient language wise or because you want the children to learn the language that you speak from uh, 
back in Russia? Um, both, but I think what I would add just uh, when we hang out, let's say international, and it's hard to speak Russian and English. Some of them get mad when you start speaking Russian. And if we plan to hang out, we plan with with the foreigners' families or Russian. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what, how we do. Yeah, just because of the English or Spanish barrier. Yeah. So some of them not speaking English or Spanish, so we have to speak Russian. Others get upset. Yeah. And so we try to divide it. But yeah, sometimes we mix it up and we do have internationals. I know you have a family here with yeah. kids. And Where would you normally hang out? Where's your favorite spots to? Here on the north coast, I guess Santa Fe, um, Cabarete, some places like Tuba, mm -hmm. uh, Drifter. And we also like to go to Catalina on yeah. the mountain, mm -hmm. uh, Restaurant Maria. Mm -hmm. I think this is the most common family places. So, so what would you say about Russians, just back to that topic, uh, do they change over time here? Are they, um, are they like they are back in Russia or would you say the Russians down here are, are different? I would say yes, they are different because at least they already made that decision to refuse all that, whatever happening there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are changing their life and they are not those Russians who stayed there for sure. That's for sure. So they're adventure spirits. At least adventure, uh, adventure, yes, and, and different mindset. So what is the mindset they want to get away from in Russia? What is it they don't like freedom, or you don't like? Freedom. Okay, so they are sovereign-minded people who want their freedoms. and Yeah. Uh, and you found more of that here? I mean, that's according to me. I'm trying to understand this question just like I did. Yeah. Yes, I would say yes. Yeah. So, final thing, what is it that you like so much better here than living back in Russia? First, what came to my mind, that's climate, the weather, mm -hmm. much better weather, and uh, political situation, of course, yes. So, the, you're more free to do what you want, when you want, how you want here? I mean, I could do whatever I want there, but uh, if we think about travel or something else, um, as a Dominican, I have much more opportunities than Russian, at least now. You are happy here? I am, yes, I am, definitely. Very good. All right, well, thank you so much for your input, and uh, I wish you and your family all the best, and all the best with your tennis. You're the, the heifer, the boss here of the tennis center. So uh, if, you, if you want a game of tennis, or you want to join the tennis club here, then uh, contact Ilya. We'll put some contact details in the Thank bottom you. of the screen there for Thank you. Thank you, Mr. T. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate All the best. Spasiba Bolshoya. Yes, I The largest number of expats here originate from United States and Canada, and they come to DR for various reasons. Apart from the nice climate, then one of the main attractions is the convenience of the short flight distance from their home countries to DR. I personally know some of the part-time expats that come and go here every week to every month and almost treating it like a bus trip. When it comes to Americans, there's about 100,000 living as expats in Dominican Republic spread across the whole country. Everyone, I'm here with Thomas, my chiropractor and little boogie. Thanks for jumping on camera, Thomas. You got it. Being an American, just explain to the viewers what the American uh, community of expats is like down here. Is it small? Is it large? Uh, how do you see it? I think it's uh, substantial. Um, I see quite a few Americans in the places that I go to. I have uh, American neighbors in my complex. I do believe we have a presence here. Right. And how long have you been coming down here for and staying? I started visiting in 2012. I bought my first condo in 2019, and then I bought another one in 2021. I retired uh, uh, almost two years ago, so I've been coming here a lot more often and staying for longer stretches of time. Now, when you normally hang out, is it in Sassua or Cabaretta or both? Both. And would you say there's certain spots where there's more Americans? I couldn't tell you honestly. I think Cabarete has its own flavor of people. I, you know, personally have not done any uh, any research on on what the the breakdown is. 
But, Would you uh, say you hang out mostly with Canadians or Americans? Or? It's got to be a mix. I, I have Canadian friends and I have uh, American friends. I think it's, it, for me, for me, mm -hmm. it's, it's about 50-50. Would you say the Americans and Canadians, you're North Americans, so do you like look after each other more than uh, maybe you would with other nationalities? Are they like sticking together? I know a lot of uh, Germans I find uh, cluster together in certain places and Italians and other places. So what about North Americans? Are they more inclined to cluster together? I think that, uh, I mean, I'm from New York. I think that the way we are is that uh, whatever f circle of friends we make, we, we look after the circle of friends that we have. I think that um, people of like um, uh, history with each other might tend to hang out together because they just have more in common. If you go to certain places in Sosua, you're going to see a bunch of Germans or you're going to see a mixture of uh, Americans and Canadians. Mm -hmm. And it's just that I, maybe people feel more comfortable. Yep. You know, they're able to talk German with each other, you know. Right. But, um, but you're having a good time. I'm, I'm having a great time. And I have a mixture of, of, of friends. Of, of different ethnicities and nationalities. Yeah, fantastic. Well, anyway, thank you so much for your words and reach out to Thomas if you, he's a great chiropractor, I'll uh, give you that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. And uh, looking forward to helping more people. Great stuff. Okay, enjoy yourself. All Thanks, right. Thomas. Thank you. The Dominican Republic is also home to approximately 50,000 Italians. There's larger Italian expat groups living in Las Terrenas, La Romana and Boca Chica. Just recently, the Italian embassy celebrated the 125th anniversary of bilateral relations between Italy and the Dominican Republic. So Italians have been coming to DR for quite some time. Yeah, folks. I'm at Playa Chiquita Beach in Sosua with a friend here, Luca. Thanks for jumping on camera. Hi. Representing the Italian side of uh, the North Coast okay. here. Yes. Is it a big uh, expat community, Luca, for Italians here? Or yeah, 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 I should say yes. Well, I, I stayed four years in Santo Domingo too. There are a lot of Italians, but here it's smaller, but uh, a lot, yes. I hear Las Terrenas has a lot of Italians. Well. Also, French and Italian, yes. When you are hanging out around Sassur, do you mainly hang out with Italians, you find? Or? Yeah, yeah, mostly, yeah. yes. And why would you say that it's just, it's easier with the language? When I was in Santo Domingo, I used to go out and hang out with a lot of local people. Mm -hmm. But here in Sassur, the, the culture is different. I mean, they are mostly countryside people just coming for work uh, in santo domingo you can you can hang out with businessmen real business but they they know italy better than me <laughs> okay so it's different so how many years you've been in uh, the country 26 26 wow yeah, in 1998 that makes me a greenie here yeah. <laughs> i'm a and, citizen already <laughs> Okay. Has anything changed in terms of how many Italians are here? Well, Sosua was really different. Of course, it was really different before. Um, in which way? Not, not many people like now. Now it's almost impossible. I used to go on the main street without looking at right or left side with my car and nobody was coming. Mm -hmm. Now it's impossible. Too much traffic, a lot of people. And also, of course, the population much more now. Yeah, they are much more Italian than before. So what sort of places do you normally hang out? Uh, is it mainly in Sassu or Cabaretta? Yeah, Cabaretta? in the same. Sassu, Cabaretta, Puerto Plata. What's, what's your favorite spot? I usually stay with my friend on, of course, in the center of Sassu. Uh, they, they drink a lot, I don't, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just for company, you know. Yeah. Uh, the central, as well as tube, uh, classical. And you got a yeah. family member who's got a restaurant yes. overseeing my this brother. kind of uh, view we're looking at here, but yes. a little bit along the coast? Yes, my brother is working at uh, Stephen restaurant in Playa Alicia. Two Very years. nice international restaurant, uh, Indian food. Also, yeah. is the only one who, who yes, eh? is um, cooking Indian food here, really good. Yeah. Italian food, is a chef. so. Mm -hmm. Very and then good. you got a multi-million dollar view. 
over yeah, 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 the, the ocean and yes. Mount Isabella. Yes. Luca, thank you very much for adding your brilliance uh, on camera and uh, wish you all the best down here. Uh, thank you to you. Okay, thank you. cheers. Have a good day. I'm here with Stan from Canada. Thank you very much for jumping on camera again. No problem. Uh, maybe you guys saw Stan in uh, a video called 20 Indicators That a Gringos Turned Dominican. So um, thank you for jumping in again, but more in a non-acting way this time. Yeah, I changed my name for that video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So it's good to have you back. Now Stan, your nationality, being Canadian, does that represent a big expat community here in uh, in the north coast? Uh, yes, actually I think it does. I wouldn't say there's more Canadians, there's a mix of Canadians and Americans. Here. Now, would you say Canadians act and behave different here than they do back in your home country? I've not uh, experienced that. I don't think so. Very much the same? Yeah, most of the people here are retired, so they, they have a different kind of mindset. Would you say you trust them more? Um, I don't worry about them. Trust them, I guess. I guess I do. So the fact that they are Canadians, does that mean you instantly trust them more than you would trust people from other places in the world? No. no. I don't look at it that way. No. I trust people on individual merit, not, not as a group. The only places I'm really familiar with is Sosua and Cabaret. Um, I don't find there's any... There seems to be more people in Cabaret No, not at all. Uh, the people I know here are, uh, mostly are from the U.S., but uh, mm -hmm. not, not that many Canadians that I hang around. So it, it depends on the situation at the time. You, know, you can't uh, you can't look out ahead like that and see who you can help more. I help people who need help. I've been coming off and on for about five years, but uh -huh. been retired for the last two years. And have you in any way changed your mind about? your fellow countrymen about Canadians? Maybe in a sense I have. You know, maybe I find Canadians are more... Uh, I don't want to get political, so... You know, they're not... They don't have the same... Uh, awareness? Awareness of what's going on. They seem to be more... They would rather follow the government and go along with their, their uh, propaganda bullshit. So, you know, more conforming to a government view. Right. Thank you very much for jumping on camera. We'll, we'll do cheers. cheers. We are at Bikini Bar having a a nice uh, mixed juice here. So yeah. <laughs> There's also about 17,000 Dutch people living in the country, which includes both people born in the Dominican Republic from parents of Dutch descent and from folks from the Netherlands who just chose to move here. I'm here with. Elmar, who's been on video before, thanks for jumping on camera again. You're welcome. So you're the Dutch representation here. So uh, Holland, does your nationality, uh, in your opinion, Elmar, represent a big expat community over in Sussur Cabaretta? Actually, my nationality is German, but I lived all my life in Holland. Um, grew up there. I don't think I'm much German anymore. Um, no, there is not a big expat community here of Dutch people anymore. I've heard that it was quite big a couple of years ago, but now it's it's just the odd one that you find somewhere. Maybe in uh, a thousand expats, there are may maybe four or five Dutch people. Yeah. So with the the COVID nineteen, they it cleared out a lot of nationalities here. Yeah, I don't know if it cleared out. Uh, I would have expected that. Uh, the, the big lie, the convict scam, uh, would have brought more people here from the the Western world. You would have thought so, but yeah, I saw a lot of people race back to their respective uh, countries after that. Anyway, uh, next question I have for you. Like I said, there are not much Dutch people here uh, in the time that I've been here, one and a half years now. I probably encountered about five or six of them. Um, I know there is a, a hotel in Susua that's run by Dutch people, but I've never been there. Mm -hmm. um, and the people I met are, yeah, nice, friendly, but also a little bit weary about strangers, even other Dutch people. Um, 
like it's I not think, like you cling together straight away. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, me, no, I don't cling together. I, I commute with any any nationality. I don't mind if it's Russian or if it's uh, Spanish people or Germans or English people, Canadians, Americans. No problem. Okay, way to go. And do you find uh, yourself hanging out at specific places uh, more than others in this region to? Have your enjoyment? Uh, no, where do you I'm, normally hang out? Sosua, Cabaretta? I must say, uh, normally I'm either in Cabaretta or in Sosua, and uh, I just go there where I see some people that I know and I like. And the majority here of the people are uh, are American or Canadian, so that's uh, that's where I uh, where I hang out the most, I think. No, I don't think so. Uh, I'm a very, very open person to everyone. Uh, nationality doesn't mean that much to me. I'm, uh, I'm more like uh, if you treat me good, I treat you good. And anyone who is in need for help, I would, I would help the same. So after being here a year and a half, reflecting about the country you left, do you look at Dutch people? A little bit different now or has anything changed? I think I've changed my mind a little bit about the Dutch people that are still in Holland or in the Netherlands. Um, I don't understand why people just won't wake up and if like me I saw that there was nothing I could do in, in the Netherlands to improve my life or improve my future or improve the future of my kids um, so I took the decision to try it abroad. So this is the country that I chose. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone understands, but in my opinion, it is very clear that governments all around the world are, uh, are changing the way they are uh, ruling the world and uh, not for the better. And I hope this island will give people a chance to escape tyranny a little bit longer and I hope that a lot of people see that and also try to find a place where they can maybe join together and make a stand. You sound like you're you're happy with what you found here and would you recommend to other people to move to Dominican Republic? Yes, um, the Dominican Republic has a name of being, uh, being dangerous. I haven't encountered danger yet. Uh, in this island uh, in, in 18 months. I've been living on a boat on the beach uh, next to one of the slums, the barrios, with a lot of Haitians and poor Dominicans. And I have not encountered a single day that I say there happened something that was not even as, as, as bad as things that can happen to you in other countries, in Holland or Germany. I think big cities in, in Holland uh, and Germany or Belgium, they are more more dangerous than any place here in the Dominican Republic. The people are friendly, the people are nice, the people don't have much, but there is a, a, a big social control inside of the communities. They all look, look out for each other. They don't want other people's stuff stolen. They want their own stuff stolen. So it's, it's a community here. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of one big family. Yeah. The, the thing that we lost in the other Western worlds, I think. Okay, great comments. So um, if I can just interject, it's like an underlying expectation of respect. You don't violate other people in public. You don't do anything uh, stupid. Or There will be a lot of people coming at that person if they try to yes. do senseless assault or anything like that. Yes. So, yeah, very good. Elma, again, thank you for being on camera and uh, all the very best down here. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Everyone, I'm here with Daniel from Quebec si. in, in uh, Canada. Yeah. Thank you very much for being on camera. No problem. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to interview somebody from Quebec is as much as it's Canada, it's a different part of Canada, different si. culture, if I'm correct. Si. And there's a lot of people coming down from uh, yeah. the French Canadian side. Yeah. So um, would you say your nationality or your uh, part of Canada, uh, Quebec, etc., represents a big part of the community down here? Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of Quebecois here. 
know, the people who speak French, there is a lot of Quebecois, a lot of uh, Anglophone from Ontario, mm -hmm. and uh, the other one from uh, New Brunswick, Manitoba, but uh, it's a lot of people from Quebec. It's a. Uh, How long have you been here? Uh, six years on vacation yeah. uh, for uh, two weeks, but now I'm a uh, expat here yeah. for six months. And would you say that uh, people from Quebec they act differently here once they're here than they do back in Quebec itself, or are they very much the same way? In the okay, in Quebec, it's it's it's, it's uh, Go, 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 go. and here is relax. So when a Dominican said to you, said to you, uh, I'm going to be here uh, at one o'clock, it's never one o'clock. No. Yeah. So okay. do, do you find a lot of people from Quebec hang out together? See. Si. They group together? See, si, see, si, see. Si. Yeah. But on the playa, on the public playa, okay, there's a place, there's a little bar. Mm -hmm. If you want to speak French with the Quebecois, there's a bar who's a Quebecois rich together. Yeah. And they only speak French. Okay, some Quebecois don't want to mix with the other. Okay, they just want to stay together with the Quebecois. Mm -hmm. Is that quite typical, would you say? Say, but me, I go to, to speak with, uh, with, with my friend, but I'm going to come with, here with, with Asian. With a Dominican, with German, yeah. you no, know, with Anglophone. Don't care. Yeah, well, well, I've been to a couple of karaoke's where you were there, see, and see, I, see. I could see you were having a great time, like see, myself. See, so see. that's good mixing. Yeah. Me, I want to learn with everybody. Dominicans, they really stick together if there's a problem. Would you say Quebecians are the same way if there's a problem? Mm -hmm. The Quebecois are together and they support them. The German is like that. With the people from Ontario, you know. Yeah. I respect that. Now that you've been here for a little while, um, would you say your view about people from Quebec has changed, or, or are they the same as when you came here? There's a good man, and there's a good people in Quebecois, and there's a bad people in Quebecois. It depends. Before air, there's a lot of pollution, mm -hmm. and a Casa Marina. Seventy-five percent of the Yes, in the Casa Marina was Russian, uh -huh. and the Russian was a problem here before uh -huh. because Russian drunk, 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 drunk. Uh -huh. What a fuck, eh? True, uh -huh. drunk, no respect anybody. Rah, 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 rah. But now there's no Russian, and well, they all went to Turkey or something. <laughs> and the weekend here, it's American from Miami, you know. They take a plane, okay, big money, they not be big American with big jaw all the seat. Mm -hmm. You know, they come here, big cigar, yeah. you know, I'm American, big speaker, boom, 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 boom. I don't go on the beach, me on the weekend, mm -hmm. because it's a problem. They drunk, they speed loud, rah, rah, rah. The flash, flashing, flashing, American, flashing, flashing. Okay. And here, the Canadian money, no value if you compare a U.S. money. Yeah. 10, 15 years ago, there was a lot of what we call snowbirds that came yeah. that seemed to have minimized. There's not so many coming in anymore. So we get a right mix from all over the world. You just mentioned before I started this video that you're going to go adventuring down to Rio San Juan and and uh, achieve a more uh, tranquilo lifestyle down there. You don't see that at Rio San Juan. You don't see that. You just see air because the Chica. Yeah. Chica. And it's, a, it's a tourist place. The Chica see this guy. Money, 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 money. You know? Yeah, there's many options all the way down the coast. But um, Daniel, thank you very much for your great words here. And I wish you all the best with your new adventure down in Rio San Juan. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, okay. my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm here with Ez from Egypt. Hello, everyone. You're the only Egyptian I've ever met. <laughs> that also means I don't bump into other Egyptians down here. So uh, have you met any other Egyptians here? 
No, I've heard of a half Egyptian that lives here and owns a shop here, but we haven't met yet. Now, you like Dominican Republic. I love it. I love it. So what uh, what makes it tick for you? Why is it uh, paradise for you? It's the Caribbean. It's the nature. It's the beaches, the blue water, the trade wind blowing every day, 300 days out of 365. We've got wind here. I'm a kite surfer, so can't ask for more. Amazing people, good culture, tranquilo, just, just relax. Yeah. So now when you meet people here, obviously you don't meet Egyptians, but you meet people from all over the world. How are you finding these different cultures? They're vastly different, right? But then in my own experience, when you live outside your country, you go through different stages, right? The first stage is, okay, I'm going to compare everything to my culture so I can have a reference. because That's my scale of everything, my own culture. And when I went to Canada, which is a melting pot, I did that at the beginning. But then you start dealing with people on daily basis and getting familiar with the Latin culture, getting familiar with what the Chinese would do, what the Indian food is and all of that. And then you, you kind of have an understanding of the opposite culture from their own perspective. And that's a higher understanding. But it won't come right away. You'll need some some time passing and listening. Really stop talking and start listening, you know, that's the main thing. Right. And is there any specific nationality you find more appealing to hang out with than others down here? Like uh, maybe you like hanging out with uh, Austrians more than Germans <laughs> or Germans more than Austrians? Or is there any specific culture where you think, yeah, I have more Canadian friends or? When I first came, I had more Canadian friends because I knew them from Canada, right? So mm -hmm. I was hanging out with them. But now at the moment, um, my closest are a couple of Spanish guys, a Venezuelan guy, hanging out every day. I, mean, I, I really don't think about them as what their nationality are. I just know them like, oh, so-and-so, is that's his name. And I, that's where it ends for me, right? But mm -hmm. yeah, I mainly Venezuelanos and Spaniards. So. Final question. Uh, do you hang out at any specific spots with uh, friends? Mainly I'm in Playa Aracón and uh, Cape Beach. Well, I'm very happy to have met you and also uh, thanks for your input in the video here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, it's a little bit different to have somebody from Egypt on here because we don't see a lot of you guys yeah. over this side. But uh, thank you again and all the very best with uh, your plans for the future. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Enjoy. thank you guys. Bye. Everyone, I'm here with Sasha from South Africa. <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Thanks for jumping on camera. Now, Thank you for having me. Sasha, how long have you been in Dominican Republic? I've been in and out, um, but in total around five years. Yeah. Have five you met years. any other South Africans down here? Actually, no, I have not. Uh, you're from Dive Cabaretta, so you're a certified instructor? Yeah, I'm a Paddy open water dive instructor. It's a, a dream job. It's a Caribbean career. And um, over here, it allows me to raise a family and have my um, career of my choice all in one. So it's wonderful. You really can have it all in life. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Compared to South Africa, what, what's this country like, if you were to just say it in a few words? Well, that's a really good question, considering it's a, a main African land versus a little island. Over here, you really feel like you're on an island. Um, most people are really easygoing. The Dominican local people are very easy to get along with. Um, and the one thing that really stood out for me personally was that there's not so much harsh racism as mm -hmm. there is in South Africa, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a lot more freedom to just be yourself. Yeah, me too. I like that. And they are very accepting of all uh, cultures and nationalities. Yeah, so all great. colors and cultures and yeah. origins. Yeah. Who do you find uh, privately you hang out with most or is it a mix of different nationalities? It has been a mix. Um, I get most of my English conversations with um, the customers that we get in here. So during the job, my instructions are always in English. Mm -hmm. um, but on a personal level, I would mostly hang out with Dominicans and that's actually how I learned to speak Spanish, was just submerging myself with the local people. Fantastic. Well. Uh, you're having fun, enjoying life? 
That's I'm very grateful. Saying. I worked really hard to get to where I am, so I'm definitely enjoying my life right well now. Well done, well done. Well, I wish you all the very best. And again, folks, I'm just going to go above Sasha here, Dive Cabaretta. You can find her in here if you want to go for beginner's courses or you do advanced courses. All the and way from beginner to advanced that. snorkel trips, yes. So this is in Sasua Beach Car Park. So again, a big thank you to you, Sasha. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Cheers. <laughs> All right, folks, that's almost it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and educational. And if you're considering moving to this country, then feel free to contact me to inquire about my relocation consulting services, which will no doubt save you a lot of hassle, time and money. Simply send me an email to info at educatedtraveler.info and I'll promptly send you my price plan. Also, for a very small fee, you can invest in my online information service called InfoHub. To check it all out, look for the link below this video. Many thanks for watching. Happy travels. Take care. Bye-bye.